Uh, MATLAB background uh, for neuroscience and um, what we do at Gatsby is we apply machine learning methods for uh, neuroscience. So basically there are these two very different communities around. Uh, one is um, the machine learners mostly using Python and then the neuroscientists are mostly using MATLAB. So um, I was already using these two languages quite a lot and I just decided that Julia I can do all these things at once hopefully and uh, the transition from MATLAB to Julia for the neuroscientists should be much easier so I'm really hoping that the community moves uh, towards uh, Julia a bit more um, yeah I started using Julia around uh, version point uh, four uh, like one and a half two years ago and yeah um, I'm not necessarily a package developer but uh, I'm hoping to learn things about it here and uh, yeah uh, trying to get to like a release uh, stage on this point process stuff um, can we start? OK, so uh, new people who may have joined, uh, welcome to the room. I'm uh, Gerge Bochner from uh, London. And I'm going to talk about point processes. Um, in particular, I'm going to talk about a package that can be used to visualize uh, a bunch of point processes that uh, happen at the same time from different emitters. Um, I'm mostly going to use um, neuroscience language because uh, that's my background. So these uh, things that generate the point processes are going to be neurons in the brain. And uh, the events themselves that we are recording during the uh, point process, uh, like during the uh, recordings, are going to be neural spikes, electrical spikes, uh, that happen nearly instantaneously uh, be, uh, within one millisecond. So one thing that we do know is that these neurons are connected to one another and we would like to, um, uh, like to learn about what these neurons collectively represent. It's called the population code. Um, so going into, um, uh, so first I'm going to talk about what point processes are a little bit. Then I'm going to describe a method that uh, we can efficiently use to do inference in uh, relatively complicated models. And then afterwards, I'm going to talk a bit about how this is tied to Julia. Then I'll, uh, before I let you guys ask questions, I'll have uh, some questions myself about how this should have been done uh, properly, because I'm quite unsure about that. So uh, starting out with point processes, the type that most of you probably heard about are uh, spatial point processes. You can use these to uh, describe, um, uh, for example, uh, people standing uh, around, uh, plants growing, because all of these uh, locations that we have in a spatial point process, um, they affect everything uh, around them. So there are already a couple packages um, in Julia that uh, try to describe these kind of processes. Uh, using uh, determinantal point processes. So I'll uh, leave this uh, development up to those guys and uh, uh, in one, two, three, et cetera, dimensions. But uh, the one dimensional point processes have actually a special structure if we uh, consider uh, the time axis. So determinantal point processes uh, in general are symmetric, whereas uh, temporal point processes that we uh, observe also in the brain uh, make the assumption that an event can only influence the future, so that our one dimension has a direction. So uh, if we uh, call our like mark our events at uh, points T1, T2, etc., then we have an ordered uh, set of uh, events happening. So what we do in neuroscience research is uh, we don't trust just one set of observations, we repeat it over and over. And uh, the problem with it is that we get very, very different uh, results. So it's not obvious that uh, these uh, observations come from the same underlying process, but uh, we hope it should because we are uh, experimental, we are trying to control for everything else other than uh, noise, neural noise, which is uh, Poisson noise, which is really hard to deal with. So our assumption is that uh, these uh, observations are generated by an underlying intensity function. And uh, as good machine learners, we're going to parameterize our intensity function and end up uh, making some assumptions. So one of the assumptions is that we are not only recording uh, ob observations many times from the same emitter, but also that we observe many, many emitters at the same time. So what we'll have to do, uh, instead of trying to visualize like 100 uh, neurons spiking at the same time, we want to estimate some covariates, uh, things that the neurons represent collectively. And uh, uh, our assumption is that because behavior is very consistent, whereas spiking is very inconsistent, the covariates that the population of neurons uh, represent is actually very stable, whereas the individual uh, 
uh, activity of a single neuron is very inconsistent. So we can estimate the, these cover as these latent functions X uh, from the spiking of uh, collect, uh, neural population. So I'm going to talk about the easiest type of uh, point process here, which is Poisson point process. Uh, so previously we made the assumption that events can only influence the future. Poisson point processes make an even stronger assumption that events don't influence anything given the underlying intensity function. So uh, knowing the intensity function completely determines the Poisson point process. So the problem with uh, Poisson processes uh, in general that for many, many parameterizations of, uh, of the intensity function, the integral itself to get the log likelihood is intractable. So um, people generally use uh, discretization to estimate it, but it can be very, very costly. So uh, there is an alternative method which we employ in this package called score matching. And I'm going to talk about a little bit there, like how does score matching get rid of this integral. So the idea came uh, in 2005. And, uh, Representing the log likelihood as a data dependent and the data independent part, which works for our Poisson processes as well, um, turns out the integral is data independent. So if you take a derivative respect to the uh, derivative of the log likelihood respect to the data, then uh, the integral just falls out. And we can uh, define this function as the score function. Um, so to estimate the score function, we ha have to have an objective function. Uh, as we learned uh, yesterday um, during our uh, machine learning intro, uh, we want to have an objective to minimize over. Our objective is going to be matching the parameterized score function to some unknown true underlying score function. And turns out with a lot of nice mathematical tricks, if you take the um, expectation with respect to our observed data set of this difference, then you don't actually need to know what the true uh, underlying uh, density was. It just simply falls out. So we have a score matching objective. Unfortunately, this was defined uh, only for uh, 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 independent and identically distributed observations. So we had to extend it for point processes. Uh, but you can obtain an empirical point process score matching objective that you can plug into any, uh, score, uh, any machine learning model that you wish. So uh, our goal is, to reiterate, is to go from the left side, which is a bunch of uh, observed uh, spikes, to the right side, which is a representation in a latent uh, space. And you can see that uh, the left side is very, very noisy, and you don't really know what's happening. Uh, whereas on the right side, you can uh, find structure in the data very, very easily across uh, many, many trials. So this is just uh, basically going from very high dimensional representation to a relatively low dimensional representation, which gets rid of most of the, most of the noise that, uh, that you know it's internal to the uh, neural spiking, spiking process. So first I'm going to talk about the model a little bit. So we have latent processes X, and uh, we assume that there is a, a linear mixing of these and then an exponential nonlinearity, which uh, leads us to our intensity functions lambda. And afterwards, we just uh, sample from the intensity uh, functions, uh, given that we are uh, using Poisson processes, to have observations. So this is our generative model on the top. So given some observations, uh, tau, we want to do inference via our score matching objective to learn about our latent processes. So yet I haven't talked about how do we parameterize these things. Um, so what I use in technology-wise is uh, representing the latent processes in a reproducing kernel Hilbert space, uh, which means we pick a kernel and uh, then we estimate the intensity, estimate the latent functions at time point t uh, as a linear combinations of the, of the kernel uh, centered on some inducing points, and uh, the other argument is the t. And uh, this is this is a very very clean representation um, of of how to how to represent any uh, functions. And then afterwards, we have these functions. Uh, we just mix them and uh, add some uh, baseline firing rates. Uh, basically, our parameters of the model that we want to um, infer are the uh, alpha weights, the uh, C uh, mixing matrix, and then the B baseline firing rates. So that is what we minimize uh, via the score matching objective. And uh, turns out you can actually do this, uh, all of them in closed form, uh, which is quite cool. So. First of all, we need to um, represent our data somehow. So the good thing is that we observe many, many, uh, observe, uh, many, many trials, but uh, the, 
um, object objective function uh, decouples along these trials. So we would like to do uh, all this in parallel, basically sending our uh, trials to different nodes, doing some computation and just collecting the results, like uh, how, what do you believe the value of these parameters should be? And uh, yeah, and then just uh, merging those on the, on the main node. So um, yeah. I'm going to talk about some issues about that there. The other thing is that uh, for score matching, I kind of skipped over it, but you need the derivatives uh, of uh, the log likelihood. And turns out that derivative propagates all the way to just simply the derivative of the kernels. And you can represent it as the time derivative of uh, kernel matrices themselves. Uh, and I, at the moment, I'm using uh, calculus. Uh, again, it's a horrible choice. We'll talk about it. Um, and finally, uh, to estimate some hyperparameters, you have to do some kind of optimization uh, framework, either grid search or you can do uh, smarter optimizations. I try to use uh, optim.jl uh, for uh, that. So basically, we need a generative model, an objective function, and a bunch of Julia packages trying to work together so, uh, to achieve our uh, quick visualization goal. So this uh, already has been done. Um, all of this. And it uh, turns out that the Julia implementation using this model is about uh, 10 to 100 times faster than similar uh, MATLAB uh, type models. So yeah, I'm very happy with Julia in terms of speed and uh, ease of coding. Um, the parallelization I had a lot of issues with, but uh, yeah. Um, so moving on, basically I have some issues and uh, I, I want to release the package and I have some questions about that. So first of all, um, the data structures, I'm a a little bit unsure what to use for efficient data storage of uh, non-uniformly sampled uh, and uh, different length vectors. Because for every trial and every neuron, I have a set, basically. And uh, this set can be uh, going from empty to hundreds of uh, uh, observations. So at the moment, I'm using a nested uh, any arrays of any arrays, which doesn't actually quite work well with uh, the uh, distributed arrays at the JL. Uh, I think the version 0.6 fixes that, so they provide an interface for that. Um, secondly, uh, I had some issues with the uh, uh, ML kernels. So I would have loved to use automatic differentiation, but it doesn't work with, uh, with the implementation that uh, currently happens there. Uh, so that's why I'm using uh, calculus instead of instead of uh, getting symbolic derivatives of my kernels. And just generally an issue is that I don't believe uh, Julia has a kernel package other than ML kernels, which uh, which seems to be very new. Um, there is another package called Gaussian processes, which also implements uh, kernels on its own. But in general, everybody's implementing their own set of kernels to use. And it would be much, much better if there was a single package that everybody could use just jointly. And uh, yeah, it would be efficient. Uh, and the other thing is, yes, that distributed arrays uh, cannot handle variable data sets, uh, I believe. Um, I had a lot of issues trying to test uh, and uh, implement code under different versions of Julia. So um, I'm, I'm not sure what the current policy uh, of, or uh, should I just release like a, basically a little bit different package for different versions of Julia? Or yeah, uh, if, if you guys can point me towards some uh, um, things there, then that would be very helpful. And uh, yeah, so what's, what's in a good Julia package? Um, so different communities have different goals. So for, for neuroscientists already, what's in the package, I think, would be quite useful. But um, there is a big uh, economic audience, and uh, uh, this um, like whole point process idea easily fits into the uh, multivariate hoax process. Uh, uh, modeling that you know you you uh, try to model a, a set of joint uh, point processes and try to infer some parameters there. So that could be that could be added. Um, in general, it could be used for arbitrary machine learning problems like uh, network traffic analysis and uh, and uh, that kind. So at the moment, it's written uh, in in terms of like um, documentation language and everything in a very neuroscience focused way. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or a bad idea. And uh, how much uh, you want the package to be focused on, on core problems, um, rather just solving the problem and outputting some uh, formatted result. And you can use your own visualization tools or like your own evaluation tools, or uh, how much uh, this should be included in the package. So at the moment, I have uh, included the visualization tools and the evaluation and yeah, everything. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's the correct thing to do. And yeah, how to do. Uh, proper documentation and testing of packages and etc. Um, yeah, so 
thank you very much, and uh, I'd love to hear some input of, of people who yeah, want to contribute to this. Thank you. <laughs>